Um, Tim? Tim, this is Paula. Paula Martin. This is my husband, Tim. Oh, nice to meet you. That's funny. My ex was called Tim. Oh. Not a divorce lawyer and all, are you? Sadly not. That's a shame. Hmm. Yeah, I could have saved myself a fortune if I was. How long have you two been together? Uh, we've been married nearly three years. And you've got daughters, is that right? I've got two daughters from my previous marriage. Yeah. Rosie's in Japan, being a TV celebrity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Sophie lives here. And Tim has a daughter who lives with her mother, mostly. It's a modern family, isn't it? Yeah. Right, uh, are we all done? I'll see you out. Now, listen, don't worry. I think we've got a good chance of winning. It's his word against yours that the messages on his phone were from your burner phone. And if there's no phone, then... Nice to meet you, Tim. And you. I'm off for a bath. Flaming Nora. She's had a poop. Oh, wow, something smells... Amazing. Yep, that'd be me. Oh, to be more precise, my smoky marinade. Dad's doing one of his special barbecues, love. I think you felt threatened about how good mine was for Jack. <laughs> oh, right, great. So when you said it was an emergency... It is an emergency. I want a bit mad in frescoes. Don't tell me that's all me. It's not all me. But I did tell him. So is there any particular reason why we're having a barbecue on a weekday afternoon? I do have a meeting with Paul this Oh, afternoon. here we go. What? Dad's gone to a lot of effort here. Well, I don't doubt that, Tim. I just needed a bit more notice, that's all. Right, well, you two just stop arguing. We've got guests. We're not arguing. How many guests? Oh, yeah. Hello! Oh, she's got the wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all on me. Yeah, don't worry, there's plenty. Right, uh, uh, <clears throat> now that we're all here, I believe young Faye has an announcement. Thanks, Grandad. So I've been talking to my mum and she's happy for me to move back here. Hey. Oh, if that's okay. Of course it's okay. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. So. Come on. Uh, leave the poor man alone. Uh, go on. You might get it right this time. No, no straight jackets. So we're fine to rearrange. Ah, oh, that's great. Thanks, Paula. Okay, see you then. Bye. I think now's a good time to talk to my dad. You ready? Go on. Cheers. Cheers. Seems like we're both celebrating getting fair back in our lives. Yeah. <sighs> Do you mind if we have a word? Oh, yeah, of course. No, I mean, you and me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Tim, if you don't mind. I thought this, um, this party was about you two patching things up. Ah, I suspected that's what Faye was planning. I mean, she's good like that, isn't she? Very caring. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to say that again? You what? Faye, the person who's moving back here, the person that you love and you want to be with, she's lovely, isn't she? Mm-hmm. You think he's cool enough on our fair, don't you? Before you start, I know I shouldn't have gotten involved. I just don't want to see it get hurt. I know you don't. Because you're a good woman. She gets herself in a bit of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Flipping heck, has Jeff not lit that barbecue yet? I'm just doing they? it now. Give us a hand, will you? Just trying to give them some space. You can patch things up. Sorry. Wait, guys. What are we doing out here? I thought we were supposed to be giving him some space. Yeah, right. He's just gone on over there. At least we can light this now. I'm Hank Marvin. Do you, you say Hank? I say Lee. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on, it's a barbecue. You can't just stay on your phones. Come on, come and play some cricket with your daddy. Right now, this is called a googly. Googly. Oh. Whoops. Yeah, that's that then. That's a shame. Yo, I never mind now. Okay, I'll get it down in a second. Come on. Uh, come no, on. no, no, don't do that. You've been drinking. You're, you're, all about. About. you're the one who's been putting it away. Come on. Right, I'm gonna cut that out. Listen, pass me the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> Thank you. Just... Careful. Oh. What was that? The police looking for a mobile phone. Mum says we're sharing a car. With you. Morning, Kerry. Morning. Where do you want me? If you grab an open, that'd be great. Thank sure. you. Sean. Sorry. Go to prison. Look, look, if the police say that when Sally goes to prison, it's evidence she was having an affair. Wait, you're not saying you think she did this? No, of course not. I mean, obviously, Duncan planted it, but the police aren't going to believe that. Yeah, but it definitely would if you think that you'd moved it. We get rid of it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. First things first. We need to tell Sally and Tim. No, then they'd be complicit. I mean, if they know nothing about it, then it's, um, 
What is it? Um, plausible deniability. Plausible deniability? What are you talking about? This is not House of Cards. Shh. Shh. What are you lot whispering about? So I'll go inside. What? Stop being stupid. So you don't want to see this? I don't want to see what? Is that? Oh, my God. This is Duncan's handiwork. He's trying to incriminate me. What, by putting the phone in the gutter? He wants everybody to think that I'm trying to get rid of the evidence. But there is no evidence. I was never having an affair. It's dynamite. Is it? Like, if I had an affair and I owned a secret phone, I wouldn't dispose of it in my own back garden, would I? I'd drive miles away. You can't let the police see it. Yes, she can. You've got to play this with a completely straight back. Not this again, Sal. Get rid of it. It's not your call. Hand it over to the police. She's in up to her neck. Why hand the police ammunition? Because that's the way they'll get to the bottom of all this. Nobody touch it. Well, I'm taking the kids home. They're not getting involved. Tim? What do you think we should do? Should we ring the police, or...? I don't know. I just want to talk to you on your own. Well, I'm here because I've had a wake-up call. and say it. You don't believe me. Well, can you blame me after all this? Tim, it's not my phone. I didn't put it there. Well, whose is it, then? It's Duncan's. All right. So he sneaked in the garden, whipped out a ladder, climbed up on the conservatory roof, hid the phone in the gutter, and then sneaked out and nobody saw him. I got somebody to do it. It's bonkers. We were fine an hour ago. Yeah, I'm trying to stand by yourself, but every day the plot thickens and it's just... it's just getting harder and harder to believe. It's not my phone. I have never seen it in my life before. I don't have a secret phone. I've never had an affair. I never would. I love you. And if you don't believe me, then we've got a real problem. <sighs> Wish you could let Reed. Well, read mine. Do not cajole Sally into breaking the law. If that phone is anywhere near as incriminating as the one Duncan gave to the police, exactly. then... Exactly. It's a police matter. There will be a police investigation. They can't take the law into their own hands. I know. Just looked really bad for Sal. Am I the only one on her side? Oh, God. You want the police to find that phone because you think Sally's guilty. Yeah, that's what this is about, isn't it? I'm just saying, you know, it's not. You think OK? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Is that the police? Yeah, it's Tim Metcalf regarding Sally Metcalf's fraud case. Yeah, I think we might have found some evidence. You're being ridiculous. Yes, I'm worried about Tim, but I don't want to see Sally sent down. It's like I'm the only one. You don't know what's going on any more than I do. <sighs> Maybe now we'll find out. With the help of the police, her name will be cleared. Stay away from that plant pot, Dev. Treat it as a crime scene. Yeah, of course. Beer? Sally. I don't think things are looking too good between Sally and Tim. But what did they say? She's gone off on tears. He's called the police. The police? He's done drawing? No way! Listen. It all looked a bit heavy. Right. Um, well, we need a couple more chairs out here and uh, and get some more snacks. Go on. That was deep. Honey, where you been? Uh, just went to the loop. Got a visit herself. Since you. You called the police then? Good. We agreed it was the right thing to do. I believe you got a mobile phone you'd like to show me. Yeah, yeah, it's over here, mate. So we were getting a tennis ball off the roof and it fell. And when we found it, we called you and nobody's touched it, have they? Care to explain? Well, it was there. Somebody must have moved it. Nobody left the garden. Except Gina. You had to go to the toilet. What are you looking at me for? I, I haven't touched it. You were the one saying you wanted to get rid of it. I haven't touched it. But is there a mobile phone here or not? I could arrest you all for wasting police time. Yeah, honey, have you moved the phone? No. Look, if you think you're protecting me in some way, Gina, you're wrong, because Tim and I have talked about this. We agreed. I, I thought he was dobbing you to the police. You told me that. Okay, where's the phone? I threw it away. OK, 
I can see it. You're not to excuse my sister. She'd say it. Don't say what. It's labelled. I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say she had no business doing this. She's bung out of order. I didn't know you'd agree to call the police. I thought making the phone disappear was a help. Here it is. This evidence could be tainted because of your actions. I can't believe you did this. Gina said, and I'm arresting you for perverting the course of justice. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which will later a line in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Gina, what have you done? I'd like to come to the station with me. Yeah, today gave me a real buzz. And when that phone turned up, you didn't believe me. Well, I was just having a bit of a wobble. My worst fear about you becoming mayor was that you'd meet somebody smart and successful. Oh, Tim, I'd never cheat on you. Well, the trouble is, Dunkin' Donuts gone to some elaborate lengths to make it look like you're dead. And thanks to Gina. Oh, talk of the devil. I, uh... <clears throat> well? Well, I admitted the charge and they let me off with a caution. Well, that's good, isn't it? Well, you still landed Sally, innit? Why did you have to do something so stupid? All right, Tim. No, it's not good. Sally's now in a whole heap of trouble. Yeah, well, I thought I was helping the... Well, according to Paula, the phone on its own was no good until you decided to get rid of it. Now Sally's in real danger of going to prison, thanks to you. I hope you're pleased with yourself. With the SIM card from the burn phone. And? The data matches the records from the one Duncan said you were using. So it's all a setup. I can't believe that. But to the court, it will look like it proves that everything Duncan said was true. All right, honey, come on, give him some space. Right, right, just give me five minutes. Uh, I just want to say sorry for yesterday, and um, if there's anything I can do. Yeah, you can sling your up. You've done nothing but brought trouble since you've been round here. So, please. Uh, just go, Gina. I don't want to see you right now. Right. I've made it. Um, Isla's going travelling. What, not the impending court case? Yeah, no, is this uh, your daughter, yeah? Yeah. Did you name her after Alice and Claire? No. Oh. She, um, she just split up with a long-term partner and she wants to go off and explore the world. Partner, eh? <laughs> She's very 21st century. <laughs> well, girlfriend. Oh, actually. that's your department, Sal Girl Crush. Oh, shh. <laughs> Paula, this is amazing. Because I have a gay daughter who's a lesbian too. Really? Yeah, Sophie. I mean, she's great, but she's in Liverpool at the moment. But when she comes back, maybe so, we so, could set her up. That is a genius idea. Yeah, if they hit it off. Yeah, well, uh, Anna might not like lipstick lesbians. Still, <laughs> don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> yeah, and then she might not want to go travelling. Oh, hey! <laughs> to lesbian daughters. Lesbian daughters. <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> I've got to find out what's going on with that pub. Yeah, and I get it. I know what I'm like. Oh, no, don't start that. If he's embarrassed of you, then that's his problem, isn't it? Do you know what? I've got a good mind to go around there and give him a piece of my mind. I'll beat you to it, love. Hey? Said a few words when I went to pick that stuff up. What did you say to him? I told him the truth, that you were a bit of a handful. Oh, Tim. But it's true. It's what makes you you, and if he doesn't get that, then he doesn't deserve you. Oh, thanks. Nice. He can be sensitive when he wants to be. Well, sensitive's not the word. I did swear at him quite a bit. Yeah, oh, my hero. <laughs> Oh, Sally, are you sure it's all right for me to stay? You've got so much on. Gina, you can stay as long as you want. Just don't wear my dress again. <laughs> yeah, it's times like this that families need to stick together. Thank you. Right, come on, let's make some tea. I'll, um, I'll put that stuff upstairs, shall I? Right. Oh. Oh. How long are you going to stay at your dad's for? Well, it depends on how Jack gets on. Yeah. Come on, we've got to get to the party shop before the rush. What party shop has a rush on this time of the morning? They're very popular. I want to make sure that Jack's coming home, do goes with a bang. Yeah, well, no party poppers. It's a celebration. Tim, he's just had his foot removed. He doesn't want any unexpected bangs. It could startle him and he could topple over. Oh! He's in a wheelchair. No party poppers. Come on. Oh. Hey, a few friends wanted to welcome you all. Hi, Jack. Hi. You all right, Jack? Well, that's a stupid question, isn't it? Do you want a drink, Jack? Or a sandwich? Or... I'm all right. Nice wheels, mate. 
Sorry, Beth couldn't come, but she got you this. My grandma's dead. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's not all about you, Ruby. It's about Jack. All right, that's enough, both of you. Sorry, Jack. Everybody's really missed you. Is it nice being out of hospital? I hate hospitals, mate. They have this reoccurring dream where there's a mix-up in admin. They remove me ears. For God's sake, Kirk. Can I get some squash, Dad? Yeah, of course you can, son. She can eat you. What did I say? Happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> you know what? I completely forgot about it. Oh, I don't think this is quite the welcome home party Kevin was after. Thanks, Sally. I can lodge these tomorrow. That's if I can find all the other bits and bobs. Honestly, my office is like the Bermuda Triangle some days. Well, thank you for bringing them round here for us to sign. You saved us a trip. Oh, it's a pleasure. Let's me out of the house. Do you know, I've always encouraged Arla to travel. I think the only reason she's going is because she's broken up with her frankly awful girlfriend. It's funny, isn't it, that we've both got gay daughters? <laughs> that is such a coincidence. Isn't it? Yeah. Is it? You wouldn't be saying that if you both had straight kids, would you? Well, I've got one of them as well. Oh, God, me too. <laughs> that is mad, that is. Same again. Uh, yes, please. You know, Sophie's amazing. She's been looking after her little brother all day. He's just had his foot removed. He just got back from rehab today, bless him. What, and you're in the pub? Oh, no, no, he's not my son. Oh. He's my ex-husband's, Sophie's half-brother. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't leave a child with one foot at home. No. No, not on the first night, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, Isla's being so stubborn. Her career has just taken off, and yet she reckons she's got nothing to keep her here. Oh, well, now Sophie's back. Do you reckon this is a good time for her and Isla to finally meet? Well, I think anything's worth a try. <laughs> All right. The backyard last night. Either that or top and tail with Mary. <laughs> You stop going on about it. I thought they seemed fine, Angie and June. Yeah, but you never know what goes on behind the scenes, do you? Look at me and Dev. Mm, talking of Dev, I'm starting to think you were a little bit too hard on him. I mean, he was very supportive of you, wasn't he? Yeah, until it wore thin. I need more than that, Sal. I need someone I can rely on, someone rock solid and down to earth. Mm, opposite of you, then. Well, I say opposites attract. There's a fella out there for me, I just have to find him, and I might start looking today. Good for you, because you deserve better than Dev. Thank you, Tim. Mm. Well, like I said before, you can stay here as long as you like. Oh, <laughs> that's really sweet. <laughs> right, I'm going to go and get a fry up before work. <laughs> what did you say that for? What? That she can stay here as long as she likes. Yeah, you said it first. You told me that I've got to be more sympathetic. Well, not too sympathetic. <sighs> You've stuck with her for years. Women. Hello. Mm. Um, Mum, is it OK if I come over later and do some work here, only it's a lot quieter without my dad and Jack? Yeah, of course. Uh, by the way, are you free for lunch at the bistro? I suppose. Why? Do I need a reason to treat my daughter? Oh, and you're paying? Go on, what's about? Nothing. I swear. Say half twelve? All right, then. Great. For tea. It's Jamie's stir fry. For a chicken. Tim, look at you. Do you know it looks like you fix cars, not drive them. You're filthy. You look fine, Tim. Hey, you did. Hey. Oh, you Kev, Brill. Ah, oh, hi, you. Kev. Oh, look, an actual mechanic, and his shirt is spotless. Oh, that's handy. Um, I'm looking for a new garage. Do you do MOTs? Yep, yeah, and uh, we're just on the corner. Oh, um, Paula, Kevin, Kevin, Paula. Hiya, nice to meet you. You too. How's Jack? Yeah, fine. Faye's watching him. Actually, Gina, could Kevin sit beside Paula? Because I might need you to help me with the dinner. Oh. <laughs> Sophie, can you give me a hand? So, Paula, what's your bed? What do you think of Paula? Mm. Yeah, she's nice. Don't you think her and your dad would just be perfect for yeah, one another? You're not had enough of matchmaking over lunch. Oh, I just want your dad to have someone stay in his life. It would be nice. Yeah, I've had them working on them. I've got your family. Hey, maybe we should invite Audrey and Lewis round for tea one night. Sorry, am I boring you? Oh, thanks, Kev. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, what do you think about these self-driving cars, Paula? Because they must be a legal minefield. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they do raise some interesting ethical dilemmas. Yeah, well, they'll put us out of business. Well, if we've got an engine, I'll still have a job. Yeah, but you must get sick of these electrics in modern motors. I mean, you need an IT degree to turn on her windscreen wipers. Mm. Well, these are executive saloons. They need all the gadgets. I was often in one when I was a mayor. Nowadays, you're more likely to be seen in the back of a black Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, um, just excuse me for two seconds, I just need to send a quick email. Thank you, Gina. Yeah, settle down, will you? Oh, sorry, Tim. Sorry, sir. So, what do you think of Paula? Yeah, no, she's very nice. Nice? She's intelligent, she's classy. She puts on her pants one leg at a time, like everyone else. She's a sophisticated woman, Gina. She's a distinguished lawmaker. Mm. Sophie, put your phone down at the table, please. Oh, sorry. Mm. Everything all right? Yes, yes, just a, a client that I've been trying to pin down. Oh. Um, I'm gonna go. Oh, it's only early. Yeah, I know, but, um, got caught in the morning and I've drunk too much wine already. No regret in anything, are you? No. What about you? I'm embarrassed to be seen with a distinguished lawmaker. No, not at all. So, um, when can I see you next? Um, I text you. But, but what? Can we keep this between ourselves for now, just because... I'm representing your mum, and I don't want it to get yeah. complicated. Sure. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, I'll get your coat. Thank you. We all know why she's keen to see the back of Paula. Do we? Oh, nice to meet you. It was lovely to meet you, too. Oh, do you have to go? Oh, I've had a great time. <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to do this again. Hey, uh, see you later. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Hello. Then why didn't you get a number? Well, have you got it? Mum, I am pretty sure that Paula is more than capable of making her own moves. Yeah, give him a break. He's only just met her. Stop trying to sabotage this, Gina. What? He's off, eh, Sam? Oh, thanks, Tim. Well, she's great, Sal, but do you really think Paula Martin's solicitor is going to be interested in Kevin Webster, mechanic? Oh, Kevin, she might be a high flyer now, but as Gina says, she's one of us. Really? I mean, there's nothing to stop a, a Webster and a Martin being a brilliant couple. Anyway, she's keen. Trust me, I've got a sixth sense for when a woman has an eye on a man. <laughs> no, she really wasn't. Hello. You're out, love. I thought you were at Steve's stag do. I can't have a stag do with that stag. Why? What happened? Oh, his dad decided to gate crash the party. I didn't know he wasn't in prison. No, neither did Steve and Liz. Anyway, after that, it all went a bit Pete's song and it was good night, Vienna. Well, I'm not surprised, honestly. That Jim MacDonald is like a bad penny. I know, I still kind of felt sorry for the guy, though. Talk about a broken man. Yeah, well, you reap what you say. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, these are my favourite. Oh, 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 oh. What? Oh, never mind. Hey, I pulled up a bit of a coup today. Why don't I like the sound of this? I only convinced Paula to go on a date with Kevin. What, in other words, you stuck your beak in? I prefer the term fanning the flames. What, by lining up a booty call for your ex, will be? Well, after everything he's been through with Jack, he could do with a pick-me-up. Plus, it'll keep Gina at arm's length. Well, I'm telling you now, I'm staying well out of it. Personally, I think you should put a bit more energy into your own love life and make a few booty calls of your own. I do not make booty calls. But I might be willing to learn. Oh, hello. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Can I get you anything? Uh, no. Thanks. These people look at every little thing and judge you. You can't even open your mouth and you judge. Sure, Jacket Blouse, you'll be fine. Who wants scramble? Who wants fried? And no rushing about. I want everyone ready and here for half eleven. Mum, will you stop stressing out? Also, Jack's made you a good luck card. I'll get it in a bit when I go on. Oh. It's not luck she needs. It's Paula, so you're going to be fine. Am I talking to myself here? Who wants scrambled? Who wants fried? Nobody wants any of your flaming eggs! And you need to curb your temper when you see Duncan later. Of course he will. We really need to go over some things. 
At the risk of getting my head bitten off, I've cooked them now. I can't think here. Should we go to the cafe? Right. And be ready for half eleven. What? 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 You look nice. Thanks. I was thinking about wearing the blue blouse, but... No, you're fine. You're more than fine. You know, I've been calling Sophie, but it keeps on going to voicemail. Half eleven, I've told her. Twice. Look, Sal, we've got plenty of time. Yeah, to be fair, it's only just gone half past. Do you want me to bob along and go? No, I'll go. You need to get yourself smartened up. And you. Oh, come on. What are you doing? Always be ahead of the game, sunshine. I'm just getting going with my seedlings. A bit quick off the mark, aren't you? <laughs> you think old Brian Titsmars isn't going to be at home right now, potting up his oleo? Well, make sure you tidy up after yourself. Sally's stressed as it is. Yeah. Where the hell is she? Hey, what do you think her chances are, honestly? Good. Paula reckons so, anyway. You are not going to believe this, because I can scarcely believe it myself. It turns out that my old school friend, my solicitor, is having a thing with my daughter. A thing? Yes, Tim, a thing, a sex thing. Flaming heck, you're kidding me. Do I look like I'm kidding? They've been having an affair and it's been... Well, they're both single, I suppose, so technically it's not really an affair, is it? Well, I mean, they've not betrayed a partner as such, but they sure as hell have betrayed me. Paula's never let on she's gay. Yeah, certainly not to care for it till he finds out. Oh, believe me, he knows, because her and Sophie were... Well, they were together in his house, and we both walked in on them. So how did you leave it? The woman's supposed to be defending you in a couple of hours. Uh, yeah, not so you'd know. And as for Sophie, I can't even look at her. Well, do you want to go and have a word? The important thing right now, love, is your case. Yeah, do what you want. Beth? I'm going to clear up as soon as I'm done. Can I borrow your mobile? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Sally! You've got a goal of. You okay? You look nice. I thought we could go over a, a few things in the car. That won't be necessary. I've decided that I shan't be requiring your services at court. What? Sally, I know you're upset, but I really don't think that's a good idea. Upset? Disappointed? Betrayed. But it was all OK when you thought that Paula was sleeping with my dad. But now it's me. Don't even go there. Nice. Look, whatever you think about, you need Paula to get you through the day, don't you? Sally, you've got to let me help you, because if you phoning that witness comes up in court... Help me? I mean, it's a bit late for that. You have not been across this case, and now I know why. And do you know what? That's fine, because I do know it, inside and out. And that's why I'll be representing myself. Well, will you stop being so flaming stubborn? Timothy? I'd prefer it if you didn't come either. So. Sally! Mum, you can't do this! And who says? I do. I think you're making a really big mistake. Do you know what? I'd appreciate it if you stayed out of my business from here on in. But you don't know what you're doing, love. Don't I? Just have a rethink, please. Don't rush into something you might regret. You know, it would be nice to get a little bit of support from someone, but I've come to realise that the only person I can really rely on at the moment is me. And me? Yeah, I'm with you, Sal. I just think right, you... Well, if you're with me, Tim, get in. Okay. Yes, I have. OK, you've got that. Yeah. You're cutting it a bit fine, aren't you? Uh, we still have a few minutes yet. I've been waiting over half an hour. It'll be fine, trust me. Yeah. Oh, 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 where are we going? Just here until we're called. Well, isn't there a waiting room or something? This is it, I'm afraid. Oh, there must be somewhere else. Away from him. Don't worry, he's not going to do anything. You don't know what he's like. Right, I'm going to take myself off for a little walk before I say something I might regret. It's Paula about. Need to have a word. Well, you can talk to me. It'd be much better if I spoke to your solicitor directly. 
I've sacked her. You've sacked Paula? Yeah. So you've got anything to say, you talk to Sally. <sighs> OK. There's not much sport in this if you haven't got someone to represent you. I'll give you a couple of numbers. You've done enough already. Metcalf and Radfield. Courtroom three, please. This is it, kid. Go on, sir. Good luck, you'll smash it. Anyway, you took one. I'm sorry. I just, Dad, I, I don't know what to do. Apologies for the delay. I've reviewed the matters raised earlier, specifically the point of Mrs. Metcalf contacting a witness. I'm sorry about that. I'm grateful for your apology. But unfortunately, Mrs. Metcalf, having established that you have contacted one witness, it raises the distinct possibility of you contacting other witnesses. I'm not going to do that. The prosecution have raised no issues over Mr. Radfield's bail conditions. But they have raised concerns over Mrs. Metcalf's, specifically tampering with evidence, accessing confidential contact details, and intimidating a witness. Mrs. Fisher also has concerns for her safety. Concerns that I share, given the accused's readiness to employ underhand tactics, and the history of Mrs. Metcalf's spouse's attack on Mr. Radfield. I'm sorry about all of that. Your apologies have been noted. But I'm afraid, Mrs. Metcalf, that to ensure that these proceedings are not prejudiced, I have no alternative but to revoke bail and place you on remand until the court date. And take her down. No, no. What? Prison. I don't want to go to prison. Please don't send me to prison. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry I messed up. I didn't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to go to prison, I just want to go home. Please let me go home. No! I don't want to go to prison. Please let me go What are you doing? Breathing. Well, stop it. Then I'd die. It's like sharing a cell with an asthmatic buffalo. It's a relaxation technique. It's not relaxing for me, is it? You woke me up. Sorry. It's very easy. You breathe in. Two, three, and hold. Two, three, and out. Two, three. It's great for anxiety. I wasn't anxious until you arrived. Sorry, I'll try and be a bit quieter. What are you up for, anyway? Fraud. But I didn't do it. I was the mayor of Weatherfield, and somebody set me up. Never met a mayor before. You minted, then? Well, I wouldn't say I was minted, but I have got a bit put by. My husband runs a taxi firm, so we're doing quite well. Auntie Gina? Have you spoken to my mum? Not yet, have you? We need to do something, though, don't we? We need to try and get her out. How, though? I don't know. Maybe speak to a lawyer, maybe speak to Adam. Oh, we can't do that. He'll tell him and stuff. It might make things worse. Look, Paula said that she will represent her. She just needs to be instructed. Well, she's not going to do that, is she? After what happened. Oh, Tim. I don't want to talk to you. I don't even want to look at you. It's not Sophie's fault. I'm talking to both of you. It's thanks to you two that Sally's been locked up. You because you messed with the evidence and you because you couldn't keep your knickers on for five minutes. I'm sorry. You're sorry? It's the day of your mum's pre-trial and you're carrying on with a lawyer when she should have been preparing for the case. Give her a break. Why should I? Because she's really suffering. Her mum's in prison and she's still shouldering the guilt for what happened to Jack. Well, that's different. That wasn't down to her. No! And neither's this. You're not a violent man, 
Yeah, so this is this Duncan business. Well, him not had it in for so I blew a gasket so what? Well, yeah, well, he's asking for it. It was just in enough trouble and we're all making it worse. You with the phone, me with Paula, and you beat the solicitor up. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we should tell her any of that. Yeah, we need to make her feel better, not worse. Oh. I didn't know I needed to come, but I'm glad I did. Oh, sell your face. So why didn't you come all earlier? I've been really worried about you, love. Because I wanted Sophie to get Paula back on the case. How's the cell and everything? Well, I won't be giving it five stars on TripAdvisor. And I don't think I'm going to be keeping in contact with my cellmate when I get out. So what happened? It doesn't matter. Hopefully I'm going to be out soon. Well, you shouldn't be in here at all, love. Um, Rosie's rang. She wanted to fly home, but I'd ordered to stay put. And I've spoken to Paula and she said that she's more than happy to take your case back on. You've just got a ringer and confirm. I was so stupid to suck her in the first place. Yeah, 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 it's okay, it's okay. What have you done? Oh. Car door, you uh, caught it, didn't you? Well, she's gonna find out sooner or later. Might as well tell her. I thumped somebody. Who? Imran. Yes, I swear. There was no need to thump him. What, he was sticking off you. I think it's really quite romantic. No, it's not. It's stupid. You have made everything ten times worse. I might as well choose the colour of my wallpaper for my cell because I am never going to get out of here. But, Sally, you're innocent and in a way this shouldn't affect what's going to happen to you. My husband thumps my co-accused solicitor. And I am locked up for strong arm in a witness. We look a right pair. It's gonna be all right, love. I've got to get out of here. Okay? We've only been here ten minutes. I'm going. Mom. So come on. Look at like this. Mom. Sally. Sal. Sal. Sally. It was a moment of madness. Oh. Yeah. I, mean, I was really surprised. How well, do you know? Did they talk about it? Oh, yeah, everyone's really upfront about it. I suppose it's a safe subject we can all talk about. Right. See, if you believed everything that you heard, read or saw on the telly, you'd think that prison was overflowing with lesbians, and that's simply not true. I suppose when you think about it, why would it be true? I mean, why would there be more lesbians in the criminal world than there is anywhere else? Well, that's the other thing about prison. We're not all criminals. No, of course not. And obviously, there's no link between criminal behaviour and sexual orientation. Exactly. <clears throat> I do like that shirt. Well, I picked it, especially for you. Oh, and you find it. How are you coping at home? Good, good, good. Gina's been great hanging out and that. Oh, I don't take advantage. Oh, no, 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 no. Why would I? Me and Faye are going to cook tea tonight. I wish I was there. Well, you will be so. Well, they managed to get me locked up when I've done nothing wrong. What other surprises has he got up his sleeve? I'm trying to stay positive. I mean, it's been great having Gina, but I need you back home. After the trial, me and Faye are going to cook you a surprise tea. It's not your cooking I've been missing, Tim. Steady on. Remember where you are? <laughs> She phoned you, I love you too, sweetheart. Morning. Didn't hear you come in. Just come for a few bits for my mum. All right. She's just been on the phone. Oh, yeah, how does she seem? Better than you, by the looks of things. I'm fine. Are you sure, Tim? Because you look like death. Maybe you're coming down with something. No, I'm not. She'll be gutted if she doesn't see you today. Calm down, Soph. I've just got a hangover. Sorry? I think I may have had one too many ales last night. Mm. Do you know what, Tim? You are unbelievable. My mum is stuck in there and you're out here living it up. You need to get your act together. Wait, so... A meeting with the governor? Yep. Tomorrow, touch wood. Uh, I thought you was meant to be keeping your head down. Well, someone has to stand up for these poor women. I mean, they might be criminals, but they still have human rights. Yeah, but you could be out soon, love. Why at the boat? Well, these women need a mouthpiece. Besides, rocking the boat is what I'm good at. 
I'm sorry to rain any parades, Sal, but you're not the mayor anymore. <laughs> I had noticed that, Gina. Well, I think it's dead brave, Mum. Proud of you. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Don't encourage her. It's in some council chambers. It's flaming prison. If your little project goes wrong, you're not the only one who suffers. What's that supposed to mean? It means that Tim here's got enough to worry about without you getting on his soapbox. Oh, for goodness sake. What is wrong with using my experience and political savvy to do a bit of good in here? Oh, if it earns you a few brownie points, oh, God forbid it gets you in the newspaper, then so much the better. Come on, that's a bit unfair. Yeah, some of us have goals. I have goals? Since when? There's more get up and go in a fruit trifle. I'll have you know, I've put my life on hold for you in this family. Oh, I'm sorry if my incarceration has put a flaming dent in your diary. In case you didn't realise, I didn't want to be set up by Duncan. I never said you didn't get a raw deal. We all know what a victim you are. Right, time out. I just want you to acknowledge, in front of witnesses, that while you're in here restarting your election campaign, I'm helping to keep the home fires burning. Oh, well, thank you, Gina, for pitching in and taking on this awesome burden. I'm eternally grateful. I never said it was a burden. And rest assured, when I get released and I'm back home, you need never have anything to do with me or my family ever again. What, that Duncan bought the burner phones, yeah? Yeah, Paula climbed right up when she saw me. It's like she didn't want me to know. Because I've got my hopes up before and it's come to nothing. That's what I said. We need all the hope you can get in this dump. What does Gina reckon? Well, she probably thinks I should be left to rot after the way I spoke to her. No. She never said that about you. Well, it's prison. It gets to you. I twist things in your head. My mum was the same. Yeah, it was the noise. There was never a minute's peace. I am so looking forward to my yoga class. Jodie's going to teach us gratitude. Gratitude for what? Well, I can't afford to think like that, Tim. I need to hold on to something. Well... Suddenly you're like the queen of chill. <laughs> I'll teach you. And you too, Tim. <coughs> Hunched over your steering wheel like a little girl. <laughs> I'm going to refocus our lives when I get back. I'm going to turn that back room into a yoga room. What, Gina's room? Yeah, it was only a rest stop gap. Well, she won't be going back to Devs. Yeah, she's elbowed in for good now. Mm, not the only one in the doghouse then. Sorry. Well, I'm not starting, Tim. I'm just saying that Deb was a really good catch. Crashing with us, it was never meant to be a permanent thing. Gina's nearly 50. She just needs to get home of her own. That one over there keeps staring at me. I should recognise it. What's she have Tim, that is the question that you never ask in prison. It's an unwritten rule. She's undressing me with her eyes. Who? Oh, hi, ah, Glennis. She's robbed a string of cabbies and trussed them up in the boot of the car. And call her the highway woman. <clears throat> Wasn't it does smart. sound a bit crazy, loads of inmates doing sun salutations, but I honestly believe that it's brought the levels of aggression down tenfold. I am so sorry I said that, Sal, and, you know, it doesn't sound crazy, and I should know. I'm still trying to get permission for this skill swap club, too, but the governor's dragging her feet. I don't think she really appreciates my go-getting attitude. Well, I bet they've not had many former mayors in here. <laughs> Look, Sal, is it still all right for me to stay at yours? Tim said it was, but... Yeah, of course it is. And let's just forget about what we said last time. I think we were both just really stressed. Gina, you can't get us some drinks, could you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're being so patient, Tim. I'm really proud of you. Well, I'll try it, but she can be exhausting. Anyway, cut the act. How are you really doing? <sighs> I can't wait for this trial to start. I just want to come home. Yeah, me too. Well, now that Paula's got proof that Duncan bought the burner phones, hopefully she can find evidence that he opened up the account on the name. Oh, God, I hope so. Yeah, me too, because the house isn't the same without you, Sally. I love you so much. You really are the only one for me. You know that, don't you? So what am I going to say when she asks about the kind of witness? You just tell her the truth. I can't do that. It'll destroy her. Well, not as much as giving her false hope. Would you rather she found out tomorrow in court? Yeah, you're right. We should tell her how it is. Tell her the truth. Hiya. 
Hi, Paula. Hey, uh, how are you feeling? Oh, how do you think? Tell me my hair out about tomorrow, but I'm trying to think positive. You know, I'm doing extra yoga classes to keep mindful. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, I've vacuumed the house and I've dusted all the pictures on the windowsill. Want it nice and perfect for when you come home after the case. Oh, what would I do without you? Actually, uh, Sally, there is something that we do need to talk to you about. Oh, God, I knew it. Something's gone wrong, hasn't it? No, 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 of course it hasn't. It's just that we haven't for definite found a character witness, that's all. What? It's fine, though, because we've got some strong possibilities, haven't we? Oh, OK. Who? I, I, I don't want to say it in case I jinx it, but it's OK. Don't worry, we're going to sort it. Thank you, both of you. It's nice to know that I can count on some people's loyalty. Why don't I leave you two alone for a bit? I'll call the office. It won't be long. Thanks, this place get to you then? No, it's not that. I'm just... I'm really worrying about tomorrow. I mean, what if something goes wrong? But at least I know whatever happens, I'll be in safe hands. Whose hands? Yours, you big lummer. Oh, yes. Cos I'll look over when I'm starting to panic and there you'll be. My rock. Two white wines. You okay? I am so sorry for bringing you out here. No, don't apologise. Where is he? I'll flame and kill him. No, what I mean is, I got it wrong. He wasn't stalking me. Well, what was he doing there? I dropped my keys and he was bringing them back. I actually apologise for being such an idiot. Oh, so you're okay then? I'm absolutely fine, apart from feeling like a plank for dragging you out here. No, no, no. I'm just grateful that you're okay. Hey, don't ever scare me like that again, will you? What are they doing here? I called him when he phone cut out. Gina Seddon? Uh, yeah, that's me. This is the guy who was trying to attack you? What? No, no, this is, uh, this is Timmy, brother-in-law. I was the one that called you. So who was it attacked you then? Uh, no one, it was a false alarm. Um, I dropped my keys and he was bringing them back. I see. This is your car, is it? Yeah, why? You drove it here. Oh, you didn't fly it. <laughs> the reason I ask is I can smell alcohol in your breath. You had a drink this afternoon? Might have had one. In that case, I'm going to have to ask you to do a breathalyzer test. No, surely there's no need for that. If you'd like to follow me. I'll say one thing for Gemma. She's got stamina. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. That's enough. Hopefully now you'll stop harassing innocent bystanders. Bad news is you failed. What? Carve. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being in charge of a vehicle no, while over the line. Hang on, but you let him off. He's you a don't cabbie. Have to say anything, How is he supposed to earn a defense living? If you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given an No, I, hang on. He was Gina. driving here to protect me. Gina, Gina, just promise me that you won't tell Sally. No, I won't, Tim. I'm so yeah, sorry. I'm, it's my fault. How do we do? We just provided another positive specimen. So we need to hold him until he gives us a negative one. Come on, fellas, can't we make an exception? I've only had a pint and a half. I don't know like that. Yeah, but I can't work if I lose my licence. Should have thought about that before you broke the law. Really? I've had a clean licence for over 30 years. How many have you got? You barely look old enough to drive. You, you need to calm yourself. You're going to make matters a lot worse. Right, full name. Timothy Osmond Metcalf. <laughs> yeah, I was named after the Osmonds. But you've never heard of him. Bit before my time. Yeah, by about 40 years. You get a pair of shorts with that uniform. I think you're funny. I think you're having a laugh, man. Right, I warned you. Stick him in number one. Oh, come on, was he joking? Yeah, well, we'll see if he's such a comedian after a night in the cells. A night in the cells? Can't do that to me. Shit get on a minute. This is really important. I've got to get home. This Move. is really important. My wife's in court in the morning and she needs me to be there. I thought about that before you started. Get off, Glenn! I need to be there! Especially. Since it has been. Yeah. I mean, you probably think this yoga's gone to my head, but. I've just got this feeling that if anyone's going to come through for me, it's him. Oh! Oh! You still be here, mate? I need to go home. My wife needs me. doing? Ready for your day in court? Ready as I'll ever be. Hopefully this will be the end of it and I can get back home to my family.
that the evidence will show that Mrs. Metcalf coerced another in a fraudulent act to extract money from charitable funds for our own personal ends. Sorry, mate. But Your Honor. Sorry. <clears throat> I am now ready to call my first witness. I call Duncan Radfield. Do you realize how important this is? Yeah, of course I do. That everything that we do reflects on my mum. I am aware there are people in the public gallery who prefer to talk rather than to listen. But I would urge those people to bite their tongues unless they want to be held in contempt of court. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. To your own charge of fraud. I made a terrible mistake, and I would dearly love to atone. Could you tell us how you came to be involved in this offence? I was coerced by Mrs. Metcalf. And could you please help us build up a picture of your relationship between you and Mrs. Metcalf? I'll do my best. What is your marital status? I'm married. Uh, sorry, was married. I forget. She's no longer here. My wife passed away recently. And has there been uh, anyone else in your life since then? Until Sal. Mrs. Metcalf, no. Could you please tell the court how you and Mrs. Metcalf first met? I approached her to inquire about applying for the council charity grant. Um, we started chatting, that soon became a friendship, and before I knew it, we were lovers. It was, um, it was very intense. There was a clear chemistry, a, um, instant spark between us. What did you know about Mrs. Metcalf's marital status? I knew she was married, which is why I resisted her initial advances. I said that we shouldn't, that she should respect her vows, but she insisted that her marriage was on the rocks. She told me that her husband was a, um, a good-for-nothing taxi driver with no ambition or interest in his personal hygiene. And that she could no longer bear to be touched by him. I soon learned that it wasn't the first time that she'd been unfaithful. She'd had an affair during her first marriage. Sally's a shrewd operator. She, she targets people like she did with me, um, pulled on my heartstrings, manipulated me, and that's why I'm here today. That's why I know there's no future for us. One day she would just you know, move on to someone better than me. She's no qualms, no morals. Sally will do whatever is necessary to get exactly what she wants. So you've not had an email at such a later? No more questions, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. Radfield. Good afternoon. Mr. Radfield, you claim to have been forced into this act of fraud, pressured into it by my client, Mrs. Metcalf. Is that correct? It is, and as I previously... A simple yes or no answer will suffice. Thank you. And you've made a statement with the police to this effect and testified to it in court. Is that also correct? Yes. It was you that opened the joint bank accounts, wasn't it? Yes. And you that purchased the mobile phones that you used to keep in touch with Mrs. Metcalf? Yes. In your original statement to the police, you said it was Mrs. Metcalf who purchased the mobile phones. I did. I lied. You lied? Are you in the habit of lying? I, I'm no liar, but Sally said that I had to be the one to set it all up because of her being in the public eye. Um... She was the mayor. Mm. So you purchased the mobile phones, and it was you that set up the joint bank account, and it was you that made the bookings in the hotels where you had alleged liaisons with Mrs. Metcalf. Yes. And you seriously expect the court to believe that Mrs. Metcalf forced you to complete those tasks? She said that if I didn't do it, she would report me to the police for sexual harassment. I was 
grieving for my wife and she 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 preyed on me she 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 targeted me and and made me do it all. Sally Metcalf knew exactly what she was doing and I had no idea. Going back <clears throat> to the joint accounts for one second, the joint account that you set up. That we both signed for and, and her signature is on the bank form and handwriting experts have confirmed that it's hers. Look, Sally was behind all of this. I, I'm just a victim. Oh, lies, this is all lies. Ms. Metcalf. No, I can't sit here and listen to this. Sally. I mean, look at him. He's loving every minute of Counsel, it. Counsel, please, could you have a word with oh, your client? This is a joke. Mrs. Metcalf. No, I am the victim. Sally. This is a suitable place to adjourn. Ms. Martin, I suggest you use this adjournment to have a little chat with your client. We'll meet back tomorrow. Court rise. <sighs> Sweet early days. I've still got to finish the cross-examination and we've got our evidence to give you. It's just... You'll get your chance to tell your side of the story. The truth. We will win, Sally. You've done nothing wrong. But you must keep your emotions in check. No more outbursts. It doesn't look good to the jury. Right, I'll let you two have a moment together. I'm going to do the plan for tomorrow. Thanks. How are you doing then, Sal? How do you think I'm doing? I'm sat in a prison cell morning till night. I'm handcuffed, shoved into a prison van, brought into a court, all for something I didn't do. And do you know the really terrible thing about all this is? Every time I think it can't get any worse, it does. Where were you? I came into court and you weren't there. I didn't know what to think. And then when you did arrive, you make a scene and you look a right state. I mean, look at you. Well, apparently I've got no interest in my personal hygiene. Duncan said that, not me. You look like you've been out all night. I have. Pardon? I got arrested. Jeannie got stranded in the middle of nowhere and she thought some bloke was coming to get her, so she called me and I went to rescue her. I don't understand. You got arrested. I'd had a pint. You were drunk? No. Well, how many pints is a pint? One and a half. But I was over the limit. You were arrested for drink driving? Tim? Yeah. Oh, how could you be so stupid? We're trying to convince a jury that we've got a good and happy marriage. Convince him? Well, like our marriage is an act or something. Maybe it is. Do you think that we've got a good and happy marriage? Do you? Did you have an affair with him or what? What? I love you, Sally, but I need to know, did you or did you not sleep with him? Again. Did you? No. A million times, no. You're on my side. Um. Then why ask me that again? Because he's convincing all the stuff that he said in there. And all the stuff that he said to me that led to this. He's a con man, Tim. He's a liar. Yeah, and he's good at it. Yeah, but it's just lies. Just remember that. It's all lies. I have some people thinking they'll want it. Stories in the paper, gossip on the street. People wondering whether you two actually were doing it behind my back. Have you got any idea how hard this is for me? In here? In court? In prison? Have you got any idea what it's like for me? Of course I do. It's hard for both of us. And when one of us gets hurt, we both feel it. I'm sorry to interrupt. I need to run through some things with you before they take you back. (laughs) 
Any news on the CCTV? Well, I stress the urgency of the situation. I think to hassle further would be counterproductive. We just need to be patient. I just wish we had more time. Mm. You sure it's all right to still give us a lift? Absolutely. Good, because I want my face to be the first face she sees when she walks in that courtroom. Don't want to let her down again, do I? Oh, I didn't let her down last time. It's just bad luck. I know, but she needs to know that we're all there for her. That we all want her on. and watch the cocktails in this joint. I just want to... Someone's not right. I don't like it. Oh, that's probably... So what's happening? Sally's been taken to hospital. Well, what's happened? Is it serious? I don't have all the details. So is the trial had to be adjourned? Uh. For the moment, yes. No, never mind the trial. What, what's the matter with her? Well, like I say, I don't know a great deal, but apparently she's been assaulted. What? Assaulted by who? When? What? Well, I think we need to speak to Sally. She's at Weatherfield General. Yeah, yeah we better go right now. <clears throat> Morning, well, I've just arrived at the hospital, so I better go, but thanks for your help, yeah. Me? What did they say? She was found slumped on the floor by her new cellmate. Well, do they know who's done it? No, they're still looking into it. I know my mum's on. The new cellmate just happened to find her. Looks like someone's marking the territory, if you ask me. Well, do you know, I don't think it is that, because they said um, that she knew her. Well, Sally knew somebody on the inside. Yeah, she's called Franklin. Franklin? It's Abby. Is that really necessary? I'm afraid so. Oh, What happened? Oh, it was just something and nothing. Well, it doesn't look like nothing, was it, Abby? Abby, no, no. Abby, help me. It was... Well, I trod on somebody's ping-pong ball. It was an accident. She totally lost it. I thought you were in your cell. Well, she followed me in. Who was it, that Vanessa? No. Who was it, then? Well, are you really interested? Of course I am. Because I wasn't sure. I thought you'd given up on us. Oh. I've been an idiot, Sally. I know you have. Well, that's a given. But you were my idiot, or so I thought, until yesterday. Well, it looks like you stuck with me for life, love. I'll give you a minute. So... You will wait for us, then? Yeah, of course I will. You're innocent, I know that. We'll get through this, you know. Any developments with that CCTV? No, no, not yet, to be honest. But I've been worried sick about you all day. Oh, Tim, you shouldn't fret over me. I can take care of myself. And I've got Abby to look after us now. I heard. Just trying to stay out of trouble, eh? <laughs> Don't know what I'd do without you. Hi, it's me again. Are you give me a ring when you get this. No, Joy. Nope. I've spoken to her since yesterday. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if she's backed out completely after what happened. Why is that, then? Well, she was furious. Sally lied to her, didn't she? Yes, only so she could get the CCTV evidence back in time. But if she hasn't told the truth about that, what else is she lying about? That's nonsense. Duncan's the one who's lying. But what will the jury think? I'm not being anti-Russian. You just... maintain that he is lying and everything he says is a complete fabrication. Yes, exactly. And why should we believe you rather than him? Because I'm telling the truth. <sighs> the truth. Where were you yesterday, Mrs Metcalf? Your Honour, this issue has already been dealt with. The court are fully aware where Mrs Metcalf was yesterday, and my learned friend knows that. Agreed. Yes, your uh, representatives kindly disclose the CCTV footage from Weatherfield General Hospital. Which proves that I was visiting a sick child who just had his foot amputated and not with Duncan. But why did you wait until yesterday to tell anyone about this trip to the hospital? Because I forgot. I can't remember where I was every day. But the date in question was your birthday. How, how can... Anyone not remember where they were on their birthday? 
It was a mistake. I was busy. And it's just as possible, wouldn't you say, for anyone to make such a mistake, to forget a date? I suppose. Someone like Mr. Radfield. No! Mr. Radfield may well have been mistaken that he was with you on that occasion, but what he is not mistaken about is that you and he were conspiring, that you were having an affair, and that you coerce him into stealing money from Weatherfield Council. No! Stop saying all those things are all lies. I have never stolen any money. I have never had an affair. I love my husband. I would never cheat on him. He's everything to me. He might have his flaws, but... He's my rock. He's the only thing that's getting me through all this. I'm sorry, but every night it, it breaks my heart. I can't be with him. And that Duncan is robbing me of so much precious time that I should be spending with my husband. You! Sophie. We will leave a beer if you want for you. You know full well. If I had not represented him, someone else would. I'm sure she'll be fine. Have you really just said that? Can you shut up? Let's get this nowhere. The jury's coming back in. Right, we've got to stay strong for Sally now, OK? They were quick. Yeah, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad. Well, it probably means that they're in no doubt. She's either innocent or... Tim. Don't. Has the jury reached a verdict upon which you are all agreed on all three charges? We have. On the charge of fraud, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. On the charge of money laundering, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And on the charge of bribery, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. <laughs> No, no. Silence in court. Are you all right, Mrs. Metcalf? Where would you be? You will be taken back to prison while I consider the sentence, then returned here for sentencing tomorrow. Court will reconvene at 1 p.m. Court rise. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> Sorry? No. Said that she'd call when she could. I don't know, I'm gonna get through this. She had some hope before the trial. I don't think she can cope. Gotta put yourself first. Why do you say that? What? Nothing. Come on, what is it? Is it about what you said in court? Gina, if, if, you, if, you, if you know something and I don't, then I, I need to know. All right. I'm not sure I do believe Sally. Hey? I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm a sister, but... There's no getting away from it. Getting away from what? Well, when she said she wasn't having an affair with Duncan... I'm not sure I believe her. All the time she spent with him, all the meetings, phone calls, breaking all the rules to put his charity above all others. I mean, you see what a good liar she is in the hospital, that story about ping pong ball. You've had your doubts, haven't you? Maybe that's for a reason. Answer it. Hi, uh, this is Tim and Sally's phone. We're not here right now, so please leave us a message and we'll call you back as soon as we can. Cheers. Tim. 
아니다. 템. It's me. Come on, you now. Lock up time. Sally and Duncan, I could have got it wrong. We well, seemed pretty convinced yesterday. Yeah, I know, but... Uh... Don't try and defend her. No, I'm not. Look, I know you wouldn't have said that unless you were sure. So, come on, tell me what you know. You deserve that much. Tim, you were sitting there listening in the court just like I was. Well, I would have known if she'd have been having an affair. Would you? She's been pretty good at hiding the truth recently. Sorry. She loves me. Yeah, but it's not the same as being in love with you, though, is it? Sorry, I forget I said that. Look, please, just go and see her, yeah? I can't believe I've been taken for a monk. You haven't. And you're far from that. I'm going to go to work for a bit. We can't drive. On the switch. That delivery car leaves on. with your phone? No. The phone's fine. Did you get my voicemail? Yeah. Why did you have an affair, Sally? There you go, mate. No, no, no. no. Sally, you were found guilty. Just admit it. Just Court believed him doesn't mean Sam guilty. Oh, I never had an affair. He's lying. Sally, I'm not an idiot. I can't believe we've gone back here. How could you imagine? No, no, it's not about what I imagine, Sally. It's what I know, okay? It's what I know. How can you know something that I know? Because every time I close my eyes, I can see you and him together. It never happened. Is it because I'm not smart enough? Is that it? Is it because I'm not clever enough? Just a, a taxi driver? What did they say in there? A bit dumb? Tim, please. You broke my heart, Sally. You really have. Ah, uh, we're up. I'm not going to forgive you for this. Him. Hey, relax. No, Sally. Elvis. Duncan Arthur Radfield, you pleaded guilty to the charges of fraud and money laundering. This was a serious matter. But in sentencing you, I have taken into account what has been said on your behalf and your guilty plea. I sentence you to two years in custody, but will suspend that for two years and include 200 hours of unpaid work. <laughs> You may be seated. Sally Metcalf, as mayor of Weatherfield, a community placed its trust in you to act honorably and honestly on its behalf. You betrayed that trust and have been found guilty of bribery, fraud, and money laundering. Taking into account your public position I hereby sentence you to a four-year custodial sentence. Your time in remand will be taken into account. With regard to the money you stole, as this was never recovered, both you and Mr. Radfield... I should like to state for the record that we shall be making an application for a confiscation order. Does anyone have any issues if we deal with directions in writing in the next couple of days? Oh, Thank Scarlett, you. What do they mean? I think they might have to pay the money back. Please take Mrs. Metcalf down. I 
Hello? Gina, it's me. Oh, uh, yeah, how are you? How do you think I am? In shock. Upset. Angry. I am so sorry, Sal. So you should be. You twisted me words. Four years, Gina. Did Tim tell you that he accused me of having an affair? He hasn't really said anything. Well, he did. And the last thing I need to hear right now is my husband calling me a liar. It's hard enough dealing with this place. I, d I just think he needs to process everything. He needs to process. Do you know what he's like? Not as well as I thought I did. And you know the really upsetting thing is? I need him more than ever right now. I'm gonna have to go. Uh, okay, of course. Uh, listen, I'm so sorry, Sal. I... Uh, take care of yourself, okay? Bye. Is that Sally? What did she say? Not much. I think she just wanted to hear a friendly voice. Well, maybe Sophie's right. Maybe I should arrange a visit. No, I don't think that's a good idea. The thing is, I think she's really upset that you walked out of court and you don't believe her about the affair. What? She's got a nerve, that sister of yours. She cheats on me and somehow I'm the one that's in the wrong. She don't want to see me. Well, I might have got it wrong, I don't know. I'll give her what she wants. No contact. Tim, no. You know, Gina, I know that you mean well, but me and Sally, I'm just not sure that there's a way back anymore. I want to thank you, though, for being there for me. Yeah, Sophie went in the shock. She don't want to see me. Sal. Yeah. Sent her an email, got a reply. That's quick. Mm. We should start a kitty for all this stuff. I don't want you to be in that pocket. No, I don't mind. Look, I hate to say I told you so, but she's in a really bad place at the moment. Yeah, well, she's wrong. I'm prepared to talk to her, but she don't want to see me. She's ashamed she can't face you. Listen, give her time to calm down. Give me time to work on her. No chance. I'm never going to set foot in that place ever again. Any shred of doubt that I ever had, that's it. Finito. I'm so sorry, Tim. Yeah. I wish there was something I could do. Especially in rural areas, that's been very icy. Tim's been telling me about this legal bill. If she thinks I'm selling my house for streetcars, then she must be daft. She bought you that business in the first place. What's that? She wants me to give it back, does she? You do know if my mum doesn't pay that bill, then they're going to come after the house. That's what my mum said because it's the only asset that you two both own apart from streetcars. All right, so she's seriously willing to make us homeless just so that she can pay those rotten solicitors, is she? What other choice does she have? You dress, haven't you? Good. OK, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, bye-bye, bye. Tim, please, can we just sit down and talk like grown-ups? <sighs> and how do grown-ups talk, so for by threatening to take someone's house from under them? I just need to know what the options are. Tim, it's not fair you being like this with me. Go and see my mum. I know you're mad at her. Go and talk to her. Sort it out between yourselves. I'm sick of talking, Sophie. Where does that get you? We need to talk to Paula. We need to come up with some kind of payment plan. We can't be the only client she's got that can't afford the bill. Well, if she's as hopeless as she was during Sally's case, then I'm sure that most of her clients have trouble paying her, mainly because they're all banged up. OK, how about I'll ring her now, eh? And I'll plan to meet up. No need. That was the estate agent. They're going to come round and give it a valuation tomorrow. What? Well, if your mum wants to turf us out, we might as well get on with it, and we get shot of it ASAP so we can all move on. But, Tim, this isn't your house to sell. I think you'll find that we're married, remember? What's hers is mine, and vice versa, and Utu, or whatever the legal expression is. Where are you going? Out to get drunk. Hi. Hi, love. What's going on? This is the estate agent. It's a smashing space. Plenty of natural light. The colour combinations are very tasteful. You've obviously got an excellent eye. Oh, it's no to do with me when it comes to decor and whatnot. This is a Timothy-free zone. Wife calls the shots, does she? Always, yeah. 
Well, it surprises me she's not made an appearance. My was not allowed to buy a loaf of bread without me okaying it. Right, well, yeah, uh, sorry about that. She would have liked to have been here, but um, prison breaks are difficult to organise. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I best take a look see upstairs. Yeah, knock yourself out, love. Seriously? I told you I was putting the house on the market. Well, I didn't think you meant straight away. Well, don't shoot the messenger, kid. Where are we going to live? Don't know, rent, I suppose. Somewhere around here, though. I don't have to move college, do I? Just relax, Faye. I'll get you sorted, OK? Something to look forward to. Sale, you're a bit eager, aren't you? Well, Sally spoke, and who am I to argue? Yeah, but seriously, it's your home as well. Nah, not anymore, it's not. I've got no real attachment to this place. It's always been her gaff. I'm just a glorified lodger. That is not true. Well, it is. Well, no, it's not, actually. The lodger's harder to turf out. So what's the plan for you and Faye? I don't know, rent, I suppose. Somewhere local. You up for it? Me? Hmm. Yeah, don't look so surprised you're in the same boat. Yeah, but I didn't want to presume. I don't be daft. Besides, if it was just me and Faye, we'd probably be living in a pigsty within a week. Uh, so it's a housekeeper you want, not a flat, mate. <laughs> Is that a no, then? Did I say that? Miss Sal. Don't you want to speak to her? Nah, probably say some I'll regret. Hello, Sal. So, how are you doing? Sal. I mean, surely he realises that selling up is the last resort. Mm, I told him that, but as far as he's concerned, you're still making him and his daughter homeless. And it breaks my heart. I'm sure it'll calm down in a few days. Well, on the upside, the place is on the market. What, already? Yeah, I thought you'd be pleased. All sale signs up and everything. Can I help you? Oh, I'm sorry. Is the world's smallest violin bothering you? You know, it's very impolite to listen in on people's conversations. Do you know what else is impolite? Not to mention bad for your health. Keeping me waiting. So? I'm gonna have to go. Do you want me to give Tim a message? Just tell him I'm sorry. Ooh, you look handsome. How'd it go with Sal? Oh, fine, no dramas. She just wanted to see how the sale was going. You know, I'm not sure I can be bothered with this party. Oh, come on. The worst thing you can do is sit here and stew in your own juices. Oh. Come on, go and enjoy yourself. That is an order, mister. All right, all right. Yeah. And if you want a good moan later, maybe I could join you after work. OK, sounds good. Oh, I love this song. Come on, get up. Ah! Get up, Dad. Ah! Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Daddy up, Daddy boy! Uh, yeah, I think that's enough, don't you? I'll get rid of them. No, you're right. I'll deal with it. <laughs> Tim. What? Tim, you, you're disturbing me customers, mate. You have to sit down. It's not my fault if there's not enough space. He said sit down. Oh, I had misery with us. Oh, 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 oh. All right, I think it's time you left. I'm not getting anywhere, mate. Come no, on, come Tim, on, let's right. go. Uh, we'll okay. put the sofa back and then we'll have a proper dance, then. Get back some ice, plenty more booze there. All oh, right, yeah, nice one. I'm going to call it a night. You are not leaving me with it, Lots. Hey. In tomorrow, I guess she's gonna get it in the neck. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Tim. Tim. Have you got a class? <laughs> no, leave it. Just leave it, just leave it. I never like that blooming rug anyway. But she went and bought it, didn't she? Like everything else in this blooming house. Her choices, her decisions. I can't for me. I might as well be temperate. Ah, it's not true. It is. Until she ran off with someone else. Well, someone else has gone and let her down now, hasn't he? So I'm just chuffing right. Um, I think he's had enough. He's uh -huh. fine. Yeah. Yeah, Me? talking of which, have you got out else to drink? Because we've run out of wine. Aye, I think you've had enough for all. Pour off, Stevie. Ah. Go got some in here. Hey! Oh, what's that? <laughs> Who's that? That's, oh. that's, that's from when we um, went to Greece a few years ago. We had a brilliant time. Anyway, pour it, let's serve a drink. It's a massive new place, but well, great. Right. Come on. Do something! Hey, hey! No, not the plate. Stop it! Why? Be um, because we've uh, run out of beer, have we? Right, I've got to Deb to get some more, then. I have to go with him because he's a right state. You're not leaving yeah, me with him. Uh, what do they say? Yama! Yama! Uh, I suppose we should put the kettle on and get some coffee. You shouldn't drink anymore. You'll have a right head on in the morning. You know what? I'm glad that you care about me, even if she doesn't. <laughs> no! <laughs> Come on. Oh. Uh, let's get to bed.
You know what? I knew that I would punch it above my weight when she asked me to marry her. She obviously saw something in me that I never did. But she made me feel very special. Yeah, well, you are special. Don't let anyone tell you you're not. Mm. <laughs> you are an all love. You're special. And I'm glad that you're here with me. I don't think I could manage without you. Are you? <clears throat> I'm woken up by your stupid music. I thought you were staying at a mate's. No, I came home early because she copped off with Logan Marley. What time did you get home? I don't know. What the hell's going on? It's like a flaming disco down there. <sighs> it is Christmas Eve and I am in a good mood. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, my head's killing me. I swear I'm never going to drink again. Ugh. That was being about last night. What about last night? You don't remember. No, don't remember go to bed. <sighs> right, well, I'll make you some breakfast. Okay, thanks, love. Whew. I can't believe she couldn't get in. What's that smell? After shave. I want to smell nice when I go and see Sal. Are you going to tell her what you did last night? Don't be daft, she'd go mad. I bet she would. Well, she usually does when I do stuff like that. What, you've done it before? Yeah, only when I'm drunk. Seriously? Look, I'd never let my boyfriend get away with that. Well, she's cross at first, but she usually sees the funny sides in the end. What's so funny about cheating on your wife? What are you about? Well, what are you on about? I thought you were talking about me climbing at the fire escape. No, I'm talking about you sleeping with Gina. I saw you together in bed when I got back. <laughs> All right. Can I ask you a question, Gina? No, I'm not going to tell you what they are. What happened last night? Oh. You climbed up a fire escape. No, with me and you face that she saw us in bed. Right, that's true. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, I don't believe this. I feel sick. That's not that bad. Well, you know, but it's not that bad. I've had sex with my wife's sister. I don't remember any of it. We were very drunk. Oh, God, what have I done? Is it really that awful? I've never cheated before. Well, you're bound to feel guilty, but don't you think it's been coming? What? No. No, I don't. Really? Well, we like each other. I think we've got a connection. Well, I've got a connection with Kev, but I've never jumped into bed with him. Right, well, don't beat yourself up about it. 
Hey, well, look at the facts. Sally cheated on you. She's in prison for years. She's making you sell your home. So you're a lovely fella. There's only so much you can put up with. <sighs> Have you been? Okay. Is it visiting time? It is, yeah. But your visitor hasn't come. Are you sure? I'm sorry, love. So it looks like you were right all along, Dad. What county are going down? No. That Gina, fancy me. What did I say? All right, I don't need a lecture. Did she make a move then? No. I did. Last night, when I was drunk. So he had a bit of a kiss and a cuddle. No big deal? It was, it was more than that. You didn't. Oh, this is not good. I know. Tell me something that I don't know. So what now? I don't know. What would you do? Well, that's not easy. I should know after what happened with your mum. Maybe Sally cheated on you. But now you've definitely cheated on Sal, even if Gina was pushing for it, and that's what was going to be there. There's nothing you can do about that. It poisons everything. It eats away at you. You'll dream about it. You'll wake up every morning for a minute, everything will be fine, and then bang, it's back. That realisation that you've done something really... I'm sorry, son, but cheating is a terrible thing. Once it's done, you can never undo it. I can't believe you've done something like this. We didn't mean for it to happen. She's your sister. I'm so sorry, Sophie. My mum is in prison and you jump into bed with that slapper. It wasn't like that. No, no, maybe it wasn't. You know, maybe I've got this all wrong. Maybe it was planned. What? No, no. Living under the same roof, all your trips to county, cosy nights in, box set and chill, was it? It just happened. And how many times did it just happen? This was the first time. How dare you cheat on my oh. mum? Well, she cheated on him. That is all lies. What? How do we know she was convicted? No, fancy you. Oh, no. Look, I was backed into the corner by that barrister. I didn't mean to. Well, just like you didn't mean to jump into bed with her husband. Look, it was a stupid mistake, Sophie, OK? And I feel terrible about it. Yeah, well, not half as terrible as my mum's going to feel when she finds out that her sister has had sex with her husband while she's in prison. Oh, come on, don't say anything, Sophie. You won't say anything, Get will you? Get lost, Tim. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. Just like you two. <sighs> well, I mean, I've got... You've not told your mum, have you? No, I haven't. <sighs> Thanks, Sophie, are you? This isn't about you. My mum's life is bad enough, being banged up for something she didn't do without knowing that her husband has cheated on her with her sister. She's going to be absolutely devastated. Why? Well, she's made it very clear that our marriage is over. Tim, she loves you. She's never stopped loving you. Mary. I'm so glad you came. It's been hell not seeing you. And I never imagined that it was gonna hurt as much. I love you like mad. And I swear 100% that I never slept with Duncan. I, I slept with Gina. I'm so sorry. You come here on Christmas Day to tell me this. I thought you should know. Well, come on. Give me all the gory details. Oh, Sally, there's no point in that. I'll be the judge of that. How long has it been going on? It was a one-off. Happened a couple of days ago. 
Why? And how bad? Uh, it's all worked out very nicely for you, hasn't it? You and Gina. Me out the way in here. It wasn't like that. So what was it like? I don't know. I don't know what it was like. I was drunk. I can't remember anything. <sighs> That's how much I meant to you. You chucked our marriage away for a quick, forgettable fumble with my sister. I thought that you didn't want me anymore. Based on what? You refused to see me, Sam. That time that I applied for that visit in order. You knocked me back. On Gina's say so. I was desperate to see you. She said that I should give you some space, that you were really angry with me. Yeah, I was angry with you. I was really angry with you, but I wanted to see you. I wanted to talk things through to try and make some sense of it. I was gutted when you said no. What the hell is going on? It's true, man. Keeping us apart, playing us off against one another. I mean, what if she deliberately tried to split us up? This is Gina we're talking about, love. She's not some criminal mastermind. Oh, she can be very sly when she wants to be. Time, please. Well, she's being dead supportive whilst you've been in here. Listen to you, defending her. Yeah, well, I know you don't want to hear love, but she has. She's been brilliant. Oh, bless. Do you think she loves you? She just wanted what I had. She always has. Oh, my God. What if she was in on this from the start, her and Duncan? No. Why would she? Gina has stolen my life. She's in my home with my husband. She's living my life while I rot in here. Come on now, ladies and gents. You're losing the plot, though. You've got too much time in your hands. Here you go, have a drink while you're there. Excuse me. So did you tell her about you and Gina? Let's not talk about that today, eh, Soph? Why? What's so special about today? Because it's not going to be a proper Christmas without my mum. So go on, how is she really? She's not making much sense. Neither are you. She thinks that Gina and Duncan are some sort of Bonnie and Clyde and that Gina masterminded everything. And what if she did? I'll give her a rest, Sophie, as bad as your mother. <laughs> And your dinner's like a flaming cow pat. I've been to see Duncan. And that man loves to talk. Sophie, it is Christmas Day. Can you give it a rest? She has been meeting him in secret. Christmas miracles, Daddy. You're making it sound worse than it is. I went to see him twice, that's all. Twice? Why? Wanted to hear what he had to say for himself. What have you done? Well, you believe him too. I know you do. I bet you still do. You made me think that Sally was guilty. Don't blame me. You manipulated me. And you totally betrayed Sally. But, Tim, she doesn't deserve you. Oh, shut up, Gina. No, you're a good man. She's nothing but a cheat. I'm the one who loves you. Me? I know you are. Me and Tim, have some privacy, please. <laughs> Your dreams. We're going nowhere. You're looking at me as if you hate me. All I've done is give you the love you deserved. Sally cheated on you because she has no respect for you. How many times? My mum didn't cheat, Gina. She had the perfect life. Lovely friends, family. She took all for granted. To be fair, Sally's worked hard for everything she's got. She lives in a semi in Weatherfield, on a flipping mansion in Monte Carlo. You had the same start in life. Sally may have had her ups and downs, but she has had a lifetime of being loved. I've never had that. Both my marriages failed. And my kids don't want to see me. 
Yeah, well, I wonder why. I mean, you were so lovely to me living here with you. I saw a glimpse of what my life could be like. Happy with you. You got me drunk, didn't you, Gina? So you could make a move on me. I didn't pour the beer down your throat. And anyway, we didn't. Didn't what? We didn't have sex. You just presumed. Just leave it, will you? Are you sure? Yeah. Just go. We are supposed to be meeting Alia at the Rovers, hmm? Hey. Hey. The sooner get shot, the better. You know what? I sat in front of Sally today and I destroyed what was left of her life because of you, because I told her that we'd slept together. I didn't know you were going to go. You just snuck off. Well, something must have happened, because Faye said that she saw us. I, I lay next to you and I snuggled up, that's all. You're pathetic. So why did you make, make me believe that we'd had sex? We were getting on brilliantly. I wanted to test the water. What, test the water? To see how you felt about me. I don't want to hear any more of this. Yeah, you do have feelings for me, I know you do. You're just trying to fight it, because it's... You know what? Thing. You're sick! And you're evil! And you're deluded! Now get the rest of your stuff and go! What? You heard me! Pack up and get out! Get out! <laughs> you were right, you know, Sal. I'm so sorry. I know that you've done nothing wrong. I know that. <sighs> Yippee. <laughs> I've always loved you, you know. I tried to stop. God knows I tried. Even when I thought you were having an affair, I... <laughs> couldn't stop. I've been such a pillock. You can get me out of here, that's what you can do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll not stop fighting until you're back where you belong, love. Back at home. <laughs> Freezing to death in the red wreck for all I care. Listen, the question is now how we get you out and home. Yeah, but I've been thinking about that, haven't I? Gina went to see Duncan during the trial, didn't she? So? And he filled her head with all sorts of lies about you. That's interfering with a witness. So it's grounds for an appeal. Or new evidence, at least. Oh, 